Hey, we're uh, back at the rover today, and I thought just because everybody hates unispotters that I should do a video about using the unispotter. Not because I like them either, but because in this particular case, we have a crease, this is all boxed in. We're gonna put a roll of studs in here, we'll have a look at the dent itself, and then we'll, uh, we'll have some laughs. Okay, well, there's our, looks like it got hit in the back and the bumper rolled ahead. Nice straight line. Uh, the damage is probably 18 inches. We put that tangent to our body. We can see, there we go. So we're in almost three quarters of an inch in the middle of that. So that's what we're trying to do. Not a really, you know, not a real life ruiner, but definitely well outside of Bondo range, as we say. So we'll start by, I'm gonna put a whole row of studs in there and try and work it out. I don't know, these things have been replaced by much more modern units. Let's have a quick look at them here. These have existed for many years. So the new ones, you don't even put studs in. They have a little end and you just pull on them. They're pretty amazing. But for us poor people, we'll use this guy. So I'm gonna start at the deepest point. I'm gonna put one there, right here. And then we're gonna work out. The only trick is to get them as close together as you can. Get them right in the bottom of the thing. Yeah, this thing's not too bad. <laughs> For more tips on unispotters, watch Kyle Carter's uh, Carter Auto Restyling, and he'll fill you in on the Philadelphia porcupine method, or whatever he called it. <laughs> oh man, that made me laugh. Kyle's the ultimate bodywork troll. I don't think I've used this thing in years never comes up. So I'm going to start at the outside and work my way across and we'll just see how it goes. Really don't want to put mountains in it. and go back, cut all these off and put them in between. Mm. And it allows you to not, you know, you can do as good a job as you want. Almost as good a job as you want. At a certain point, it's gonna go blonk and change direction. So that's what we're, we're not trying to get it all up. I used to do that, pull and pull and pull and just get a bunch of mountains, right? This way. We'll just get the outside to come out. There, so this is all coming out. Just makes the rest of it easier. So, I'd say we could have drilled all this off, pounded it beautifully flat on the thing, but you got a hundred welds to do. And then you got to plug weld it all, grind it all, and fix it all, and oh, it 
still in here. So give these a little more and then we're going to take these all off and we'll put them in between and we'll use that to bring it out the rest of the way. Yeah, no, and if they break off, that's fine too. It's really pretty good everywhere except right here. So it looks like. take these off put a second row I don't think well the trouble is that I might as well be doing this spot here so we're pulling on it and beating the high spot down so there's a few more maybe here's the only other one we got to do this, so this one, is kind of like if you were hammering it from the other side because you didn't have a doll on this side yeah it's so you're not it's really not sure. it's not ideal right? yeah. like, it's like if you were able to hammer it, but you're only allowed to hit it 12 times as hard as you can with a pick hammer. Yeah. And so it's never going to be great. Right? Yeah. So it's just minimizing bondage here. Sure. And well, anything you can do, right? Yep. I mean, we're already we're already 90% of it, so you can just fill that now. And then in commercial body shop, you'd be done. just right so that they come off like that. No grinding. Bend them over a little bit. And you can reuse it too. I, if you just hit that on a piece of sandpaper, you can reuse it. Hmm. I think this one could use another pull. close already so it looks like we want to be well I'm just gonna go literally right in between where we were and we'll concentrate right here a little more and then I'll put a second pass in here because that's a big dent in it there and that should uh, do it I think the rest of this oh I need for fucking real okay Cameraman smoke break. I think we're cutting this thing off anyway. Really? Yeah, I'll thrust it out. Oh, see. There you go. So there you have it. In light of this exciting new development, rust, rust. These I didn't think were rust, but of course they are. Those are all right through. So the bottom two inches of this is shot. So the question is, do we make a piece and cut this and weld it in? But this is such, we have to assume it's rotten from here all the way to there. So that means we have to at least cut that, but that's such a long weld. And you can see there's some shape here, right? That still bows towards me. So 
Well, anyway, when we make a piece and weld it in there, it's all going to pull flat. The other thing is that if I take this panel off, it'll make this repair easier, even though we've already made a mess with the unispotter. We can, that'll all tidy up. It'll also allow me to do a nice job of repairing if it needs any. I mean, we have to assume if that's rotten that the panel behind it has at least some damage, hopefully not too bad. Because of the construction of this and this being, I don't want to make a mess in the corner, I'm probably going to drill out all of these and all on the bottom. This seems to be loose between here and here, and I'm just going to zip it right there. So it'll mean that we have to butt weld that back together to put it back together. But I think that we'll get away with it, and that's a pretty small butt weld to, compared to trying to do this one without any warping. So I think for the, you know, there's a, definitely a couple dozen welds to drill out, pretty exciting. So I'm going to do that, and then we're just going to take this whole, I didn't want to do this, but here we go. There's no other way to fix this at this point. And uh, yeah, those aren't rock chips, that's rusted right through. So I wish it had been worse, I would have noticed it sooner. You didn't really see this because there was paint and everything on here. And uh, I had my niece come out and strip all the paint off and she did a great job, but I never really looked that closely at it until now. And now I see that it's garbage. So, uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's get at it then. We're uh, drilling out the roll welds here, ground them off down here. This is getting replaced, this is getting reused. I'm hoping to splice it right there. So we're going to try loosening this up, then uh, I'm hoping I'm going to have to cut it through here. It was just That means I'm going to have to cut that, repair that, repair that, and then weld it all back in. Anyway. heavier steel than this and when we see pretty much what we expected actually not quite as bad as I expected what I want to make sure was that I didn't have to come up to there or here or whatever so there you can see the marks from the spotter now we can fix all that and there won't be anything there and we can make this so I'm going to straighten this out just so that we can take a quick pattern from here Got a little bit to straighten out here because I had to lever it off, but that's small change. All right, there's enough to make a pattern from. Probably go halfway through and we'll just make the bottom here. There's not a ton of uh, pre-work to do here. We'll probably we'll fold this edge and we'll shrink it. And we'll probably run a little stretch on the top half of our piece. Uh, yeah, that's it. And then we're gonna weld it together. Once we got that built, we'll uh, clean this up, paint it. Luckily, it's still solid kind of crusty and you can see that yeah you know uh, maybe I'll get started and we'll rough out the the piece and that'll be all we'll have time for this week just gonna rough out this a little better before we cut it apart and uh, just probably easier to keep everything stable use my little bench here as a dolly my only regret is not uh, seeing how rusty it was before I started pulling the dent because I could have avoided all these little humps that I have in it now. So anyhow, that's what we're dealing with.
there we have it. <clears throat> Let's see if this is going to work. Rattle CAD. And there we go. And then we're going to fold that flange over. And that's going to need to be shrunk to pull it the right way. And we're going to fold these flanges over and they should be pretty much straight. And we're going to just weld it right through the middle of the thing. And that's going to be the challenge. Well, it'll be easy to weld it. Might be fun to try and make it look like anything. So let's cut this out. We'll rough it in and we'll flop it on there and see how we're doing. Uh, and that's probably all we're going to have time for today. There we go. This is curved, so I can't just put it in the brake. So I'm just going to do it a few inches at a time, and then I'll get it close, and we can fix it up later as we go. So it wasn't a super tight corner, you know. It was kind of a very, you know, it was radius anyway. So. So I'm setting the top of the vise at the bottom of my 8 inch wide line that I've made here to mark the curve. And we're just going to hope that that's close. I'm going to do this one in the middle, just for no reason. These spots here that aren't folded are acting like shrinks and they're <laughs> they're almost pulling it to the right shape. This will probably curve the wrong way when we're done. Because if it curves that way, then the line here has to be longer than the line here. Therefore, it'll have to curl up. And we can see that as we get closer, it's going to start to curl up at the edges, which is the opposite of what we want. Because the piece is so close to flat, otherwise it's not going to be a big deal. I'm just going to get it close here. Okay, and there you go. It's curling the wrong way. I think we can see that. It's going to take very, very little to get it to curl the right way. So, I think, I think we'll leave these for now. I'm going to curl it along here. And we'll lay it on top of the other one and when it looks good we'll mark these and we'll fold those down and when it sits nice on top of the other one we'll mark where we're going to cut it i think we can see this is pretty mangled up this is all over the place now right just from butchering and getting it off but the top we saw a couple of weeks ago al and i fitted the deck lid and it lines up perfectly with that curve there which was not affected by this little dent here most of which we've gotten out now anyway so, whatever I make for down here has to have this radius. Not necessarily this shitty one at this end, because that radius and that one have to be the same. Or so close that it'll get us on the car and then we can play with it. It looks like it tightens up a little bit here and a little bit here to kind of pull under the bumper or go around the corner, but pretty small change. We'll get it close. So, I think to do that, I'm going to put this here, we'll just keep flopping it on top. Okay. That's going to go there eventually, but not like that. So, well, let's try it. So, for this to be the most successful, the flange should be bent 
pretty close to the same all the way along. Like, you have it a little tighter. And if you got it tighter, then it's going to need more shrinking. doing an edge like this and something seems to be going sideways. Try you unfold your edge and it gets better, then you haven't shrunk it enough. And if you unfold your edge and it gets worse, it's probably you shrunk it too much. Okay, so again, very soft. But that's really close to what it is on the car. It's a nice, it just rolls under, we're way under the bumper here. Like the bumper, you know, the top of the bumper's here. You're never gonna see any of this, but you can see right here, it's a pretty soft, pretty soft radius. And that looks really close there. And if I do the whole thing, it doesn't even matter. Because it's, who's gonna ever notice? So, another thing with shrinking that I've done wrong before is, uh, don't just go haywire. Like, do one, two, three. One, two, three. Go back in between. Because sym symmetry is helpful here. And it's way easier to sneak up on it than it is to change dies and go back and try and figure out what you did wrong. But, so one in the middle and then split those distances and then have a look. It's already just about straight. So we're going to split these and do a very tiny amounts because this is a very, very gradual, very simple little thing. And we're screwed because we got to go here. There's not enough room. So I'm going to go split that distance again. Let's just see how it's going. So, we're probably halfway there. So, looks. So, I'm going to look. I look down this edge. I'm not. I'm looking for where it curves this way. Because if we got to put a little more in it, why not put it right where it needs it anyway? And where else is there a spot on this side? There should be. Yeah. Okay, now we're getting very close, so I'm going to be checking it all the time. That's really good there. Let's see. That's, uh, I think that's got it, honestly. And there you have it sits on there pretty good. Yeah, most of the most of the shitty stuff now is all it's this is all a mess, but that's okay. Here's enough to give the pattern. Easy enough. So let's leave it there for now. Maybe we'll even tack it up on the car and see how it's going. That's probably the best idea. In a sea of bad ideas, that's the best we can do. We could get really cute and start to uh, you know, uh, you know, trying to make this perfect, but when we weld that on there, it's all going to go to hell anyway. So I want to get it close, and then when we have to come back and stretch the weld out, we can take care of any little, you know, any cute stuff we want to deal with. But I really don't think, not really, uh, I don't anticipate a ton of that. Back at the back, and here we are. The uh, the client piece, if you will. Got the dent kind of worked out there, and uh, see, definitely does better job when you can hit it. You know, it doesn't need to be any better than that for what we're doing. It's nice and straight, has the shape of the car. That's, uh, you know, that's pretty minor detail. And uh, now, and as our buddy Kyle says, you fix all that before you do your welding, because otherwise, whatever stress from that dent is going to be welded into the panel. And then you're gonna be, those boys will be in a mess of trouble. Okay, we just clip the new piece on and we can see 
fits the bottom of the car quite nicely. Has the curve pulled that way and the smiley face shape at the back. And so, got to tidy it up around where the bumper holes are, but that's pretty easy because it doesn't actually join to anything there, so it just has to be vertical and look decent. So, from here, uh, well, from here, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the bottom of the old one off. I'm going to leave a large overlap. I'm just going to cut like, you know, two thirds of what I need to cut away. And then we'll clip this guy on and we'll leave this guy on and we'll just get rid of all this garbage on the bottom. Otherwise, I'd have to clip the new guy over top of that and that's not going to help. So we'll butch the bottom of this off and we'll uh, slide it under there and then we'll make the mark where we're going to cut the uh, old guy and then we cut the old guy and start tacking and once it's tacked we'll take it off you know then prep it out in the usual etc so uh, let's try that well there it is very roughly roughed in you can see it's not really going to be too much of a challenge that's what all we got time for on the old rover panel this week. It's uh, not going to give us too much trouble, but uh, we're out of time. And uh, thank you guys for watching. And thanks anybody who uh, uh, suggested that they would watch more of this kind of thing. I'm uh, happy to do it. Although in this case, we have reached uh, every project reaches that point where you're just like, please, no more welding. Okay. And then you always get the one last. Oh yeah. So in this case, the car had been on the rotisserie and you couldn't really get at this panel. Didn't really look at it very carefully. So now it's sitting in here and I rolled it ahead today to pull this little dent out. And uh, of course the bottom of it's rusted out. So anyway, that's really, I think the end of it. So let's move on. Uh, next time you see this, we'll finish it up and weld it on. And then it's on to the bodywork and paint on the Rover. Thanks guys. See you very soon. Ah, same old shit. <laughs>